Hey, I have a question for you. Did you know that Amazon loses inventory or damages inventory on a regular basis? And while they do an okay job at reimbursing you, a lot of times they don't. Not until you find the issue and then let them know about it. But that means combing through tons of reports and running things through Excel, doing all these complicated tasks, just way too much. Luckily, I had my team build me software that does this all for me. I called it Refund Genie, and now you can use it too. In fact, thousands of our podcast listeners have already been using it. Here are some real life results pulled from our FBA High Rollers Facebook group. So here we go. I'm gonna omit last names, but if you wanna go to our Facebook group, you'll see the post there. But Peter got back $946. Mike got back over $1,000. Jared got back over $8,000. Sherry was using another service that got her $5 back, but got back over $6,000 with Refund Genie. Jessica got back $847 and she has a diligent partner keeping up with her inventory. Mark got back over $13,000. Tony got back over $5,000. Andrea got back $2,200 in less than 24 hours. Sebastian got back $2,500 in two days. I personally got back well over $10,000 in just the last few weeks. Kevin King, my buddy, he got back over $28,000 in less than a month. Jenny got back $1,200 in the past week and Paul got back $13,900. Now these are real people in our group, like I said, all of them. Feel free to join our Facebook group and do a search for Refund Genie and you'll see a bunch of raving posts. You can join our Facebook group, by the way, if you're not in there already, there's over 17,000 members by going to ampmpodcast.com forward slash Facebook. By the way, we do not take 25% of your reimbursed money that Refund Genie finds for you. I know there are services that do that. I think that would be a lot. For example, if you're getting back $8,000, we'd feel terrible taking $2,000 of it. Instead, Refund Genie is included in our suite of tools for all paid Helium 10 members, but you get 10 Amazon seller tools that you can use for other things like keyword research, keyword tracking, hijacker alerts, misspelling generation, brand gate checking, listing optimizations, keyword index checking, and so much more. The same tools that I use, the same tools that a ton of big sellers are using. By the way, we also have a 100% money back guarantee. We only want you as a customer if you're thrilled with the tools. So Refund Genie is just one of those tools and it's included in there. Oh, one other thing, you can check to see how much money you may be owed from Amazon for free. Okay, so you don't have to be a paid member to at least see how much you might be owed. Okay, you can make that decision after you see the number. So take at least two minutes right now. Okay, you can pause this podcast, go find out, and then play the rest of this podcast. Head over to helium10.com. That's helium10.com. H E L I U M 10.com. Warning the following podcast has been classified as insanely lucrative. Listener discretion is advised what you can do is just launch a variation of your product. Say you currently sell in a 12 pack, you can just make an Amazon exclusive. Your attention, please. 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 Listening to the AMPM podcast may cause recurring revenue streams and unfair un- unfair advantages over your competitors. Other side effects may include bad, bad, better wallets, fired bosses, and longer vacations. Listen, Listen at your own risk. Here's your host, seven-figure entrepreneur and online marketing madman, Manny Coates. Manny Coates. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the AMPM podcast. My name is Manny Coates, and I will be your host. And this is the show where we discuss all things Amazon private label and how to generate recurring revenue streams 24 hours per day during the AM and the PM, hence the name of the show. Get it? AM, PM, podcast. As a matter of fact, I was just working on the specs for a new Helium 10 tool. And while I was doing that, drawing up those specs, writing out those specs, I was making money. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hello, everybody. I am here with Anthony Buitran. He lives in Texas and he is a 24-year-old that went from college student to $1 million in just two years. Welcome to the show, Anthony. Hey, Manny, just to correct you for a second, it's actually 1.1 million. Uh, <laughs> I'm proud of that 0.1, so uh, please include that in there. I'm sorry. I apologize. 1.1 million in two years. That's pretty amazing, actually. The first thing that comes to mind, well, actually, there's a few things, but how much money did you start with to get to this $1 million in two years? Um, so basically, uh, when I started, I was in college, and I had maybe about 3000 to my name. And this was just me, you know, working a work study job from college. 
So you had three thousand dollars to buy inventory, advertising, the whole nine yards. Yeah. So I mean, I didn't start with private label or anything, but I started with retail arbitrage, and that's when I kind of realized, you know, the potential of Amazon. And as I went through my phase of selling on Amazon, I went through RA, you know, OA, wholesale, and then private label, and that's just kind of what led me into the path of selling on Amazon. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So December. We just finished up the month. We're doing this now in January, this podcast. What were your numbers for December? For just the month of December? Just the month of December. I always like to use the month prior to the podcast. And it's also usually a pretty big month for a lot of people, you know, with the uh-huh. holidays. Do you have those numbers by chance? Yes, I do. Love uh, to hear them. Pull it up real quick. And it's actually been the best December I've ever had. Uh, I'm actually really frustrated because it could have been way better. Uh, <laughs> I totally underestimated the demand of quarter four. Like everyone's always like, buy, you know, like three times more inventory, four times more inventory. And, you know, I did the standard three times more inventory. Uh-huh. Definitely not enough. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think, I don't know what it is. I've been hearing this from everybody I talk to, and that is that this year, for whatever reason, sales exceeded almost everybody's expectations in December. And I talked about this on a previous podcast. My expectations were there's definitely going to be more buyers, you know, because people are jumping on Amazon Prime Mm -hmm. all the time, but there's also more sellers. So maybe it'll even out. And I didn't see that being the case. There was just more sales. Yeah, exactly. And then so for my sales in December 2016, I did... 274,000 on one of my channels of which is the Amazon channel and then my margins were about 34% so that puts me at 95,000 uh 95,653 dollars in the month of December for net profit nice okay 34% margins that's pretty solid so that's gross margins right Yes, that's, uh, it includes some numbers, uh, some of my expenses, but not all of it. But when we, we boil it down to, uh, my account's finalizing right now and everything, but I'm about 25 net profit when everything's all said and done. That's awesome. And are you doing this full-time or part-time? I'm actually only doing this part-time. Um, I still have my full-time job that I got out of college. I've been at this company uh, in management consulting for about a year and I think eight months or so. Okay. But you part timers are killing me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, they're only working like four hours a day, and you're making two hundred and seventy four thousand in December. It's just crazy. I love hearing those stories though. Yeah, I was kind of fortunate to. I guess I have a job where I'm in tech, so it's just like a lot of things don't. Um, I don't know, can be automated and yeah. whatnot. And depending on, you know, what you know, what skill sets you have. But I definitely took that advantage of being able to automate stuff because um, it's the only way you could balance it with a full-time job. And, you know, in order for you to scale business this way, you have to have the systems and processes in place in order to, you know, balance a full-time job with, uh, you know, I, I think I have a pretty active social life and, you know, make money on the side. So yeah. um, I have anywhere from seven to 11, you know, VAs overseas uh, that help me out with this business. You know, I am, you know, I am technically a one man show, but not really. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to want to talk to you about all the processes you have in place. But congratulations to do that part time and have essentially a full time revenue stream coming in. What's it going to take for you to actually quit your full-time job and do this full-time or is that something you just don't you're not even going to do you know that's actually one of the questions i wanted to ask you manny um you know i this is my first job out of college i you know i got this job from like you know a great referral in my network and you know he's super high up in a company i didn't realize that till after i joined the company and um it's going to be awkward to you know kind of say i quit or you know, or move on. Um, but I just know that like, if I had an extra 40 hours a week, I don't even know what I could do. You know, like this year alone, I think my numbers, let's see, I hit 200, uh, it's loading right now. So I hit 269. Um, uh, this is what my number is in inventory lab. So, and this is at a 30% uh, net profit in it. So like, if I had that extra 40 hours a week, you know, or whatever hours a week, 
uh, I know this number could be a lot higher. I want to double it, but I, you know, what's I've, the what's the two sixty nine, like two hundred sixty nine? Yeah, so two hundred sixty nine thousand, um, basically net profit for the year of two thousand sixteen for me. Okay, net profit. Okay, cool. So that's a substantial number. I mean, I don't know how much you're making at your job right out of college. I'm fairly confident it's not two hundred sixty nine k, unless you're a really amazing college student. So I mean, you're making more money. Right. So, and like you said, there's 40, if you have an extra 40 hours per week, what can you do? I mean, so let me ask you this. Why didn't you generate more than you did last year? Would you say it, you just didn't have enough time or was it a funding thing? Where was the roadblock? Uh, well, I did generate more than last year um, of the year 2015. Is that what you were asking? No, no. Okay. So if you're doing this part-time, um, mm-hmm. had you put full-time effort into it, would your sales have gone up or were you capped? Were you blocked by, you know, just the capital portion of it or was it a time thing? Yeah, actually in this past year, I think the biggest problem was capital. But um, in one of your podcasts, actually, I, you talked about Upfund and actually used Upfund. Um, and that gave me an initial boost in November for getting my inventory in. And from there... Now, after like the quarter four season and looking back at my numbers at the end of the year, I'm looking at my bank account. I'm like, okay, now I actually have a bankroll um, that I've never had ever in my life. You know, like I, like we talked earlier, you know, I had $5,000 to my name when I was in college. And now that number is a lot more. And um, 3,000, allowed- 3,000, you said, yeah. was it 3,000 or 5,000? It was basically three or five thousand. It was definitely <laughs> not any more than five thousand. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm surprised you can remember that. People ask me like, "How much did you start with?" And I'm like, "And that was only you know just over a year ago." I'm like, "I don't remember." I, you know, it's just there's so many numbers flying around. It gets crazy. But yeah. but here's the thing. So I don't want this podcast to go you know crazy long because there's a lot of content I want to get to. But give us a quick rundown of how you got into this whole business from from the time you were in college. I know you kind of talked about it a little bit, but give us a little bit more detail. Yeah. So when I was in college, I did the whole retail arbitrage thing because I had tons of free time, right? You know, like I could, you know, go party, drink, study, and then still have free time. So I was like, oh, let's go make some money. And then I did retail arbitrage. But once I started working, I was like, no, um, I do not want to scan stuff after work um, and have another job. So once, uh, little did I know, or little did I understand the value of time. And it took me, you know, I read like Tim Ferriss's four hour work week and um, another book called the E-Myth. And I was just like, wait a second, you know, like I'm thinking about this all wrong. I should stop tying, you know, time to money, stop trading time for money. And that's when I started going down the path of online arbitrage. And, you know, that still took time. And then wholesale, that took less time. But then private label was really where it's at. And then, you know, invest some time into getting a, a product that you just have to order each and every month you know and that's what led me to this path basically to sum it up real fast okay cool so now what percentage of your business would you say is private label i would say 90 percent. 90 percent. okay how many products do you have i have seven products but two of them are basically the main like all stars basically okay. are they so in I, the, how many brands do you have so i have four brands mm-hmm. and seven products uh so they're all um, different, you know, in categories. So I have some in toys and then, which is the main one. And then I have home improvement, kitchen, and also beauty. Okay. So you're spread out pretty nicely. And the two products that are your superstars, are they in the same brand or different brands? They're in different brands. Uh, so it's kind of a conflict of like, where do I focus? Um, I guess what I'm trying to do now is actually build out the brand so it's just like two of them though, but I'm just like, okay, like how do I t- do the social media approach to it and everything? And, you know, how do I just like brand stuff? So that's like something I don't think a lot of people really talk about in, you know, our space, you know, they launch a lot of products, but, you know, building a brand, you know, like how do we do that? So for me, what I've started doing is uh, that I've seen the most effective in my space is the toy products is that... I've been doing influencer marketing Mm -hmm. and the way that works for me, how I broke that down, that out too is, um, well, basically I'm a little lazy. So I try to outsource everything that I can to my virtual assistants. As long as I, if there's a step to it, a workflow to it, I just, you know, 
I jot down some directions, but basically I make a video. So it's all, it works really best to, you know, like use Jing or, or screencast or something just to like capture whatever I'm doing. So with influencer marketing, the way it worked for me is I had to kind of look at where my customers were either reviewing my products or like where they're like spending their time sharing about these products. And then I noticed a lot of my customers, um, actually hang out on YouTube, you know? And so like, there's a lot of YouTube reviews and then they make little skits about my product and whatnot, um, and about products similar in my space. So what I had my VA do is type in the keywords related to my product or brand. And he just jotted down like a list of, you know, the top 25 most subscribed with the most comment activity. And then from there, um, we had another VA that would kind of watch each of the each of the influencers in the space, right? And kind of, um, I wanted them, I wanted to reach out to all these influencers on a personal level, not be, and not just pitch them like, hey, can you advertise my product or use my product in your videos? You know, um, I didn't want to approach them like that. I wanted it to be like. Hey, like, you know, I noticed in this video that you did this and that and that, and I thought it was hilarious. Um, have you ever thought about doing it this way? You know, I wanted to provide value to them and approach them in like a more warm aspect. So even before I even approached them with like what I wanted, you know, to do like business wise and advertising wise, I, you know, was just like real active with them on social media. Like a lot of them have, the YouTubers usually have Twitter channels to Twitter accounts too. And so you can kind of just like fire some tweets at them back and forth. And I ranked all these, uh, all the influencers into like three tiers, like A, B, and C. A being like the ones I really want to get. B being like more minor ones and C. So for all the ones in the A section, I really wanted to, you know, get to know them on a really personal level. So by the time you do talk to them, they're warm. Uh, they know who you are already. And, you know, they like, they're just really receptive by the time you ask them like, hey, can we work together? Like, you know, I think this is something we can both benefit from. And I've been seeing actually great results from that. Nice. What kind of results are you seeing from that? So basically, I... One of the things, you know, a lot of Amazon sellers try to do is we know that Amazon, you know, a lot of our sales come from Amazon, but we want to generate sales off of Amazon. So like Shopify. So that's something I've been working on um, just starting maybe about, I think, three, four months ago back in November um, and October. I just really wanted to get set up before quarter four because I just knew like there would be an influx of people buying my product and then that'd be a great chance to just kind of get that kickstart on my brand on Shopify. So like my Shopify website right now gets, you know, like about a thousand views, like at least um, unique views a day. And then maybe about right now, I only have like about 1% convert. So I think the standard is like 2% average, but you know, to me, 1% converting is not bad. You know, that's like uh, about a hundred users hundred buyers, you know, depending on what items I have, you know, and, uh, I mixed it in there mixed it into where my shop has stuff locally from the U S and I also drop ship some items, um, that are related that I don't carry yet. Okay. So you have about a thousand people a day, 1% mm-hmm. conversion. So roughly 10 sales per day from that multiplied by, so you're getting what, like 300, about 300 sales organically from your Shopify store every single month. Yeah, Would you say least. roughly across the board, I guess, right? Yeah, across the board. And, you know, it it's not as huge as like the Amazon sales and everything. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the margins are a little bit uh, lower depending on if it's a drop shipping item or my product. But, you know, it still sells at the end of the day that like I don't really have to pay for. Um, and I generate on my own, you know, just using Facebook ads and whatnot. And it's just something like I think a lot of sellers should look into. It's just um, how do you generate sales off of Amazon? How do you like stay continually learning? You know, um, do you drive all this external traffic, this influencer traffic, always to your Shopify store first, or do you sometimes drive them direct? So I just drive them to the Shopify store because on certain products I have it just linked to Amazon, or they can check it out from my website. I make it easy for them. 
So mm-hmm. I have like the Amazon checkout built into the site too. And then also like, you know, the standard way of them checking out if they want to do PayPal or Stripe or I just provide as many options as they want because I don't want any barriers to, you know, um, them paying for my product basically. Right. Yeah. Do you pixel them or anything like for Facebook if they come to your site? Oh, yes. So this is probably like one of my favorite things I learned in the past year. Um, I kind of started getting into click funnels and whatnot. So for one of my products, uh, basically, this is one of the easiest ways I generate traffic to my site. So one of my products, you know, like I can sell it, you know, like it's like a large amount. So I can give away some of it for free. So say like I give away like, you know, like 50 of it for free. And so what uh, my Facebook ad goes, uh, this is like a click funnels thing where they, a lot of people try it out and it's the, the free plus shipping model. So the item is free. So just, you know, just help us out with shipping and we'll give you the item for free. But so I break even on that. Um, so what I do is I advertise on Facebook that, Hey, we're giving out, you know, free products and all you have to do is help us out with shipping. And everyone's like, okay, that's like, you know, total snag. Basically, like, why not? Like, it's only like, you know, four nine nine shipping or three nine nine shipping, just depending on where it goes. And uh, I charge them like four nine nine, and from there they just go to, you know, they sign up and then they get the free item. But then I upsell them, and this all takes place on the website, so they can also click to my website. And what I've seen a lot with the pixels is like they'll bounce from like actually getting the free offer to purchasing more stuff on my website. And then, like you said, with the pixel, you can retarget them back on, you know, with Facebook ads, right? And then target like similar audiences. And depending on like if they checked out or not, you can retarget them with like another coupon code. Like, hey, you had like some stuff in your cart. Like, you know, we'll give you 10% off if you finish your checkout. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your order, the charging of the shipping and handling, are you doing that yourself? Are you still running them through Amazon? And charging there what's the process so for that uh, so i do have also one person that works for me here in the states um he's the only guy that works here in the states so he's like my best friend is a little brother and he has like access to you know the warehouse and everything so he comes in and he checks the orders so for these orders he'll ship them out you know just like uh usps uh first class and so he ships them out to each individual customer. So those orders don't go through Amazon since they're just smaller, lightweight items. And it's the only way to, I don't know, we're, we're basically trading free break-even items for free traffic to our site. Okay, so help me understand. So you're giving away products, essentially. You're mm-hmm. most likely a little bit upside down on it. Maybe it breaks even. You're trying to drive traffic to your site. Is that for an SEO reason or are you trying to get reviews or what's the primary goal here? The primary goal for us is just to, we actually make a little bit of money. Uh, so we say the item is free, but we do charge them four ninety nine dollars for shipping, but the item's only like maybe $2 um, to give away. So we actually make $2 on each person that um, gets it free. Okay, you um, just throw it into like a little bubble bag or something like that? Yeah, exactly. So we just throw in a little bubble bag, ship it to them, and they get it free, you know, mm-hmm. um, technically. And then they're happy at the end of the day, but they also like, we upsell them after that to like items on the website and then that leads to more sales and more traffic. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, cool. So it's all about the upsell. So you're at least making some money because you're charging a little bit more with the shipping and handling to cover all your costs. You're pixeling them so you can continually advertise to them on Facebook. And then you're hopefully at the time that they're, this is happening during the checkout process for the free item, you're upselling them right then and there, right? Mm-hmm. Or is, exactly. that, is that the case? So any upsell that you create, that gets charged through you, through your personal system that you have that's still not going through amazon right exactly and okay. that's that to me and that's the beauty of it i mean i love selling on amazon but it's just something i guess satisfying about being able to have your own website and driving traffic through there and making money with less fees yeah oh, that's cool okay i love hearing all the different strategies so all right cool so you've got this influencer traffic would you say the majority of it is coming from i think you mentioned it was youtube right is that where almost all of it comes from or are there are other places that are really good yeah, so for well, I guess for my products, uh, generally they hang out in they hang out on YouTube. Um, so one of my products, it's more I guess like kid related. So I noticed mm-hmm. there's a lot of kids, just like you know, all these kids have iPads nowadays, and um, that's where they spend time watching like these different videos. I mean, like example of like um, videos that like 
get millions and millions of views are just like videos of kids unwrapping other gifts or other toys. And like, you'd be surprised at how many like views like these uh, kids get and how many subscribers they have. They're, they're like in the millions. And it's just like a kid unwrapping a toy and him going like really excited over it. And that's what their whole channel is about. Um, so I do take advantage of some channels like that. And that's where my audience, I think, is out. What's your biggest success from one influencer that you've had so far that you were like, oh man, that was a jackpot. That was awesome. Okay. Um, so my biggest influencer in my space actually gave me the best deal. Um, basically they just asked me to send them like a lot of free products. Uh, but they already were sponsored. I guess they had a a couple of advertising deals where people were paying them like $5,000, you know, per month to, you know, put certain products in. And we're like, Hey, can you just, uh, because we had that warm relationship with them by the time we're like, Hey, do you, we want to work with you and, you know, like, we want you to use these in our videos because uh, they, it's like something, it, the product I have for this one, it's like uh, reusable and disposable. So uh, the more they have, you know, it can't hurt them at all. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, but basically I put an affiliate link on their videos and basically they're like, this is my favorite brand of whatever. And it's on all their YouTube videos and whatnot, but I consistently get, you know, like about 20, 20, sales a day not 20 sales a day but at least like 20 visitors from um different links from their websites from like not tw- i don't know how to exactly measure i think it's uh because i use bitly to measure their clicks and whatnot but i'll get like anywhere from i think like 100 200 clicks from it and then i'm still working on how to figure out uh oh no no i'm using the affiliate codes what it is yeah, so I'm using the Bitly and they have an affiliate code. And then from when I started with this one, they generated me, I guess, maybe, what is the number? Let me pull it up right now. All right. When you say affiliate codes, are you talking about an Amazon affiliate code? No, it's just to the Shopify website back again. Um, this okay. is just all to, to generate paying. sales offline, yeah. So you're giving them an affiliate code to generate sales off of what they push to you? Is that what you mean? Uh, I, might have, I might have missed it completely. No, yeah, no, I'm, I'm confusing you a little bit. So basically I give them a promo code that they can use for their customers. So they're all their customers get, you know, 10% off. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that one guy alone generated, um, I can't, where is the code number? Okay. So to date, he's generated me $12,000 in profit, um, since we started a month ago. A month ago, really? So twelve, so twelve thousand dollars in profit. Yes. So you're talking about like close to forty grand, no, thirty to forty grand in sales, roughly, right? Yeah, exactly. And then it's amazing because this guy, he, they have, let's see, two point eight uh, million subscribers on YouTube, and each one of their videos, you know, you know, at least gets like a million views. They actually, yeah, they all have a million views. Some have twenty million views and whatnot. So mm-hmm. it's just you know, they just drive the traffic for you and you just, you know, as long as you help them out, you know, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Yeah. And this was an unboxing video, essentially. They're just taking your toy. Was it a toy? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, it was a toy. Uh, for this video, it wasn't an unboxing video, but basically, uh, this is like something they use in each one of their videos and it's a disposable, I guess, object. So they just basically... Um, say this is their favorite item. They just have a link to it in each of their YouTube videos. Nice. Okay. All right. Sounds like you landed the right product in the right channels then for that particular thing. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's really important for people to, you know, you can contact a lot of people and go really use a shotgun approach. But when you like narrow down and really focus on building relationships with, you know, uh, the key players, then I think that makes a big difference in everything. Yeah. Was this one of the finds from one of your VAs or was this one yeah. that you found? Uh, it was one of the finds from the VAs. Um, basically, he, you know, he categorized them, and, you know, and then I put them in like the A, B, C tiers and mm-hmm. everyone in the A tier got, you know, the most attention basically before we um, came up with anything. Okay. And then are you using any kind of service or tool to actually find the groups or are they just kind of combing through YouTube? So for 
this situation, they were just coming through YouTube. But I know, say, if you're like in clothing or maybe home and kitchen, I think there's a lot of influencer marketing happening on uh, the channels. Would probably be blogs or Pinterest and Instagram. So those are probably the main ones that I would focus on to if you were driving traffic to items in those areas. Okay, cool. And do you have a template that you send out to everybody that you wrote up essentially? Is it short, long? Um, it's actually short. I like to be, you know, straight to the point. I mean, these guys are busy, you know, like if you, I assume they have, uh, you know, people pitching them all day, every day. So um, I just make it short and sweet. I don't want them to read it really long because that's what I prefer nowadays. I think millennials or, you know, kids uh my age because some of my products are kids so some of the videos i don't know maybe their parents read it sometimes or Mm -hmm. uh, they're teenagers so i think short and sweet to the point is definitely like you know where our you know most people attention spans are nowadays so i think it's good to like stay in that range so are they still giving out i'm going back to the specific Mm -hmm. example because it's pretty awesome are they still giving out coupons is it non-stop coupons or have they eliminated or gone through those already no, I keep the coupons there. Like I could care less if I make less margins, but you know, the fact that like I get traffic, free traffic from it. And it's just like, you know, there, people watch YouTube videos all the time over and over. And then it's just like kind of sits there that advertises. And, you know, as long for me, like everything that I sell on Amazon, as long as the margins are still there, then I don't mind it. Okay. You know, so, I, it's, so it's an, it's an evergreen coupon. It just keeps okay. going. Cause you, the margins are there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then did you have to pay this YouTube channel owner a fee to get it going initially? So for this first one, I didn't, but different ones always have like different things that, um, you know, they request. It's kind of like, you know, uh, celebrities at concerts, they're like, I want this in my, you know, like break room, like green M&Ms, you know? So, <laughs> right. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, like they want like, uh, usually what I ideally like to do is just give away free product versus money. But depending on who the influencer is and how much uh, they ask for, like say they ask for a hundred dollars, I'm like, oh, that's fine, you know. Like I'll uh, throw a hundred. Like I'll make, you know, I can make that back in, you know, like whatever, like a couple hours or so. So yeah, <laughs> not yeah. too what worried you, about that. Yeah. What do you do when somebody? Because some a lot of the bigger channels, um, they have representation. So if they say, oh, you know what, you've got mm-hmm. to deal with my manager. Do you handle that differently? So I make my VA pretend to, I guess I didn't bring this up. I make my VA pretend to be a representative on my behalf, you know, so they're like their own marketing company essentially. And then that's how they approach them just to, I think to me, it makes it seem like more professional relationship that way. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't tell them that it's kind of like when you do private label and you negotiate with the suppliers, I never say that I'm the boss. Uh, I always say, you know, I'm just like, um, the middleman, like, uh, let me ask my boss this. And then that's just, uh, how I approach things. Yeah. You can put the onus on them, come back and say, man, my boss just ripped me a new one. I can't do it. You guys, exactly. you guys gotta come, you gotta come lower. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So how many emails do you actually send out to a one particular channel? Is it just the one and then you move on? Yeah. I mean, I just pitch on one and then, you know, all of them are like really responsive. I never had anyone take longer than maybe, I never had anyone take longer than a week to respond back to me. Uh, Mm -hmm. It could also be that maybe not a lot of them are getting pitched. Uh, I really don't know. It's just, but I feel like they would be, but even then, like, I think my product is unique. I have a unique value proposition. And by the time they see my, you know, my brand names email in their inbox, they, they're, they're like, oh, okay, like, let me open this one up. Yeah. What would be a good subject line that gets them to open? Because they probably, like you said, they get a million emails. Um, let me see. Let me I'm see. putting you on the spot here, ain't I? <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, <laughs> I'm asking I'm actually, the questions that I'm very curious about. Yeah, these are great questions. And it's just like sometimes, like, honestly, I don't come up with a lot of ideas. Um, uh, in my business, I like to just provide the strategy and vision and then, um, see what my VAs can like come up with. I'm lucky to okay. just have some VAs that, you know, I, I'm really open about them to my business and I provide them like my vision and, you know, I think I treat them really well. So they come up with some, like some interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, so do maybe, you pay them, do you pay them hourly or is it a performance payment? How do you work that? Um, I pay them all hourly. I, I think I rewarded them pretty handsomely this past, um, 
quarter four, you know, the, so most of my VAs are Filipinos. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they have like the 13th month thing. Yeah. And then, so. Where'd uh, you hire them, by the way? Upwork. Upwork. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then just to get back to the subject line thing, uh, basically, uh, there are some sort of variation of like, hey, um, we love what you're doing and we want to collaborate with you and uh, here's some free products. Okay. That's a long subject. <laughs> yeah, it is a long subject. But, but it gets it them works. open. Okay, cool. Yeah, I guess it works. Uh, it's basically kind of highlights like what we're going to do, you know, before they even open it. So. Yeah. Uh, I think if they weren't interested, then I mean, I, I had people deny me or say like mm-hmm. outrageous stuff. Like I'll put it, uh, I'll put your stuff in our video for a thousand dollars when, you know, like compared to, so I kind of benchmark everyone compared to my top influencers to, you know, the middle ones. And depending on what the top one wants, I won't give that same, you know, value to someone I don't particularly value as much uh compared to them yeah that's how that works okay pretty cool i know a lot of our listeners are going to say you know what anthony we want that email template you know a lot of people want to use something that's successful would you be able to provide that for us in the show notes is that something you can share yeah and yeah it's something it's actually (laughs) i'm afraid that it's not going to be as crazy as they think it is (laughs) you know honestly like i said i'm very short and uh I'm to straight point. to the point, you know, nice and okay. sweet. So I'm more than happy to share that. Cool. Well, this has been awesome. I love hearing all these tactics and things. So go through your day, uh, your process from the time you wake up till the time you're ending the day. Give me like a quick synopsis of that. Okay. Um, so I do have a full-time job, right? So this is how it all plays out with my full-time job and me balancing the Amazon thing. So, and then I also do travel for work. Um, in consulting, so sometimes I'm on the plane and whatnot, but usually the day starts off with the commute to my work. Um, I usually call my team in China. I'm like, hey, how are the private label items doing? Um, what's in the pipeline? What do you need from me? And, you know, we just like chit chat, you know, while I drive to work. I love chit chatting with them. Um, they're hilarious. Uh, my team over there, we're like best friends, honestly. I call them every, every morning. Everyone were like, hey, what's, what's up with the business? And uh, they expect my call, so they know that I'll call and we'll just talk, you know, about business. We're like, what do we need to reorder? You know, what's, you know, what samples are you sending? Or like, when we'll, we'll chit-chat about our current suppliers, like, you know, like, how are they doing and what they want and how we can help them. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I go to work. Um, and then at work, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty good at, you know, like getting through my work kind of fast. So I do, you know, get on, you know, look at my Trello boards throughout the day. So that's kind of like how I manage a lot of my Amazon stuff. I have Trello boards set up um, as my project management tool. Um, So I have different cards and I'll just look through that uh, just a little bit throughout the day. And But the thing is, like with private label, there's just not too much work. That needs to be done. So, and then especially if you have the systems and processes in place with your VAs, then they kind of handle everything. And by the time I get off work, uh, you know, I go to gym, uh, and then after I go to gym, eat dinner, and then I'll just check all my Amazon stuff one more time. And then that's where I'll just review that everything that gets done for a day and answer any questions that my VAs will have. And you know, it's, it sounds kind of simple, but sometimes there's just, you know, little different nitty gritty details that uh, the questions and problems that arise. Right. Okay. And then rinse and repeat, right? Rinse and repeat. So, yeah, my whole thing is just always get like a system and process in place. That's the only way you can, you know, grow and scale everything. Absolutely. I agree. That's been my thing since the end of Q4 and then moving through 2017 is to basically outsource everything I can, get all the processes set up so that, you know, I can expand without having to add hours. Speaking mm-hmm. of 2017, give us a quick rundown of your goals. What do you want to do in 2017? So in 2017, all right, um, I, I always kind of hate making New Year's resolutions, but in terms of, you know, business and, you know, planning out each of one of the quarters, um, I think it's actually uh, really smart. Uh, so there's this guy named, I think his name is Will Mitchell. Um, um, he like released this um, 
kind of like a Google spreadsheet that he used. I think he's with um, Startup Bros or something. And basically, it just plans out your goals and uh, you say you state your goals, and then each uh, week you write different action items to get you there, right? So on basically on my best brand, I'm starting on I'm gonna dedicate at least a thousand dollars per month to just for marketing, you know, just to start building a brand. Um, and it's just kind of hard. It's kind of weird doing that because sometimes you know, like when you spend money on content and stuff, like you can't measure the return on investment on that exactly. So. But, you know, I can dedicate a thousand dollars to just see where that goes, you know, see how that goes and build a brand. Um, and then I also want to launch a product on Amazon exclusives. So if you haven't heard about that, um, that's something I kind of learned in my past conference, uh, this past conference I went to. And, you know, it's just basically you launch, what you can do is just launch a variation of your product say you currently sell in a 12 pack you can just make an amazon exclusive for you know a 16 pack and but it'll become an amazon exclusive and you'll get that badge so i've heard great success from other sellers from that so i definitely want to try that out um other than that i also want to get onto the walmart marketplace um people are saying like sales aren't generating um that much on there but to me you know, Walmart is like a sleeping beast. Um, they're just gonna, I mean, Walmart doesn't have as much of love as Amazon, but when you look at their numbers, you know, Walmart is like, I think it's like four times bigger than Amazon in terms of like the money they produce and their net income. And then uh, one thing I also wanted to expand to is uh, making more listing variations. So one of the things I learned from the conference that I'm surprised I didn't take advantage of is just putting more variations in my listing of similar related products because they all kind of boost each other's sales rank and you also get to keep the reviews. So, and also if any of your items run out of stock, you still maintain everything on that listing. So everything stays good. Okay. Cool. And, yeah. No, and, keep going. If there's anything else, yeah. I'd love And then, um, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of things I want to work on, but the, <laughs> the other two main things are um, uh, expanding internationally. Mm -hmm. uh, I really, I'm already in the UK market, Germany, and uh, what is it, Japan market. So I, I yeah, okay. so I saw uh, in those markets too, and it, it has been a confusing process. Um, but someone told me that in uh, at one of the conferences at the conference I just went to that Italy and I believe it's another country in Europe. It, it is another country in Europe. Italy and maybe Spain or something have a really um, poor like e-commerce uh, presence. So like everything that they, anything that any online websites there don't really um, ship there, you know, and Amazon's actually like the biggest in those countries. And I, the one guy literally said, if I had to start over, I would focus on those marketplaces first just because no one's there and it's just easy to dominate and we all know Amazon's going to grow and you know these little countries have it you know they're they're not that little but they're just just getting it's just the beginning you know so why not get in these countries first and then you know because now it's like a little harder to generate reviews right but so mm -hmm. if you're first to market then you're going to be the one with the most reviews most likely yeah let me ask you this then how are you generating reviews for your new product launches so for my new product launches, you know, I've always had the same mindset whenever I launch a new product from the very first product I launched, right? So the very first product I launched, uh, I, I dedicated $5,000 to it. Um, it was my first private label project. Uh, I was like, all right, I have $5,000. If I, you know, if this doesn't work, then it doesn't work, but it worked, you know? So mm -hmm. what I did to launch my first product is I basically made a spreadsheet first. All right. It's really, really, really important in order numbers. So my goal with my first product, the first month was just to break even. So what I find the most important is just is getting that sales rank and getting that search term position at the top of the page. Like who cares if you break even the first month? Like if you get there, then like 
the rest of it is just maintaining it the next couple of months, you know, like you just cruise from there. So what I do is when I launch a product, uh, back in the day, you can give away your products for free or whatnot, but I still do that. I give away, so I make sure the numbers say like, I say I have a thousand units. I calculate it out to where like, Hey, even if I give away 300 units or 500 units, I'll still break even if I sell the rest. So my goal is just to break even the first month. So I'll go balls to the walls with like my promotions and PPC ads as long. And I'll just shoot to break even. Like I don't aim to make profit at all, but I always end up making profit. Um, But I just find it way more important to be super aggressive and just price your items really low, uh, break even or price it really low, like uh, below break even. um, But to where if you sell the rest of the units, you'll still break even. So on the first couple orders, like it, <laughs> your numbers and inventory allows, are, they're going to tell you like, Hey, like you're losing money every single one of these days. But by the time you, you know, you hit that number one search position or that first page, then those organic sales happen. And then you just have to, you know, you raise the price. And then, like I said, if you make sure your numbers work and the rest of the 500 units, sell, you break even for the rest of the month. Yeah, and then going into the second month, uh, all you do is restock because, you know, uh, you don't even have to worry about, you know, pushing for a higher sales rank just because you're already on that first page at a really high search position. Okay, and are you targeting specific keywords or are you just completely organic? So it is important to target specific keywords. Uh, The way I do my research is, uh, you know, I use different tools. And whatnot. Uh, Free wise, the best one um, I always go to first is uh, Google Trends or Google Keyword Analyzer, or it's like Google AdWords or something. Mm-hmm. But it's like Google, and that just tells you, it kind of tells you how much volume there is in the marketplace and whatnot. And, and um, I know there's other tools out there like Helium 10 that like dive down way more into it, but it's just depending on like, you know, what your budget is and how like what you want to focus on. Uh, I would spend some money, you know, to like kind of really look into what keywords are the most important just because you want to target the most keywords that have the most traffic, um, but also aren't as competitive. So long tail keywords are good too. But for me, I just focus on the ones with the most traffic because that's where your traffic is. And if I want to be a winner, I got to be the winner of that keyword. Okay. So you're lowering the price, Mm -hmm. very rich with your keywords and your listings. So you've got that all set up. And then you're ramping up your sponsored ads, right? Your pay per yeah. click on, I imagine, mm-hmm. just on Amazon. Is that the extent of it? You're just driving as much as you can that way at a super cheap price, or do you do anything else to target things differently? So on my new uh, items uh, that are related to my brand, um, for the most recent one, I've been retargeting my past customers with this product uh, just so they purchase it at like it's still a low price and they get it discounted and whatnot, but it's just, uh, I use Facebook ads and the Shopify site to just kind of drive traffic to it. Uh, but there's not like a huge amount of people that purchase it that way, but I just find that just putting it at a really low price and shooting for, you know, like just try and get the search position up is just key. And, yeah. you know, like nowadays, like you can't really, uh, you know, just give away a ton of products for like reviews anymore in the same way without, um, you know, without policy violations, but I just discount my products as much as I can, uh, just to get that initial spike. Like I'll, you know, like on a product that's my last one was like, uh, most recent one I launched was not 1999, but this is what I'm selling it for now. But when I launched it, I literally sold it for 499. Um, just to get that traffic in, that initial boost. Right. Was that four ninety nine the actual price, or was that the price after a coupon? What strategy did you have there? Um, so I, so I don't use a coupon. So okay. I, um, I could have, I did with like some of the warm buyers, but um, I just put it at four ninety nine, and then you know it instantly spikes, and then so depending on where it spikes, you know, like so what I do is I run, um, I, I do use jungle scout and then I look at the average sales rank of everyone on that first page. Right. So the way I see it is, Hey, if the number one guy is at a hundred search rank and you know, the number five guy is at, you know, 5,000. So I want to spike my sales rank 
enough to the sales velocity basically to mimic uh, somewhere in between that range. So say the top guy sells 100 and then the number five guy sells 50 a day. So I'll mimic it to where I'll discount my item enough to where it'll sell like 75 items a day. And by putting it at that 499, I sold, you know, I sold, <laughs> I think that first day I sold like 150. I was like, okay, too cheap. So work and mm. then move it up a little bit, you know? And um, like I said, I'm not scared to lose money because I know that next month it's just going to be all profit versus the first month is just break even. Yeah. How do you keep your product when you're pricing it that low from becoming an add-on product? Um, I think for this one, it didn't become an add-on product because it was bigger. I have had that happen in the past where uh, it is, um, I had to have that product where, uh, I just got an email from you. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, it just went out. Okay, cool. Yeah, it just went out. Uh, I was like, I was like, are you emailing me right now? Like, <laughs> auto podcast? <laughs> No, but, automated systems, right? Yeah. And which I want to ask, let's talk about automated systems in yeah. terms of your review getting, right? You're uh-huh. selling all this stuff cheap. Are you following up with a good follow-up system? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, um, I am. Um, I, I use a standard, I think, general principle that most people use. Uh, I stick to just two messages um, when following up with users because I, I personally hate getting bombarded with emails um, from anyone really um, – I think they're spam usually, but I'll send one out just saying that the item gets delivered. I'm like, Hey, like your item is being, you know, shipped out right now and you should expect it on this date, which does lead to some issues. Cause they're like, Hey, it should be here at this date. And, but you know, I have a VA that responds to all the customer service emails. So it's not something I worry about, but yeah. then, and then depending on which, what kind of product it is, like, say it's like a product you can like, you instantly know what you get like the day of like i'll i'll hit them with a review request for uh within three days uh for longer products maybe like seven days out but it's just generally between the three to seven day range but i do i think the one trick that like a lot of people do use or some people may not use is so if it's if they're going to give me uh if they think it's basically in my email uh template i'm like hey if you think this product is a four or five, please leave me, uh, the link will lead to a product review. But if it's anywhere from like a three to a one, then it will send them a link to leave me seller feedback. All right. And then are you aware of this little trick? I do something similar. Yeah. Yeah. So N- basi- not the way you're explaining it. Yeah. But yep. Yeah. So basically, um, <laughs> the way Amazon works is if someone leaves a product review, um, on your seller feedback, then you can get it removed. Um, so essentially most of my negative reviews of my product get sent, uh, on my seller feedback and technically, um, they're supposed to put it as a product review. So it's a way to kind of circumvent a little bit of the negative reviews that come towards your product. And it allows you to, uh, address it because like the customer will complain about it in your seller feedback. And then from there, you should definitely use that feedback to improve your product or improve whatever was going on. You know, uh, for example, one of mine was like, um, uh, the plastic bag rip before like even came. So like, I realized like the, my supplier was using like a poly bag that was too thin, um, in millimeters or so. So I just asked them to upgrade it. Yeah. yeah. So the technique you're talking about then, if I, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. is the email itself has the two links in there. So you're just essentially, they're going to either click the one link, which takes them to a review page or a second link, which takes them to the seller feedback page. Is that correct? Exactly. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I've seen that done. It's definitely a really cool technique. The one drawback, unless you figured it out that we had back in the day when we were looking at this was that you cannibalize one for the other. Right, because obviously you want people to post the bad stuff on your seller feedback because mm-hmm. you can get that removed immediately, right away. It's almost automated. Mm-hmm. And if it's a solid review, then you're going to get those. But your seller feedback essentially kind of takes a hit, right? Even though you're removing stuff, you're just not getting as many seller feedbacks. That's what we noticed. We do something a little bit different. It's kind of the same thing. Reroute people. If they're pissed off or upset about something, mm-hmm. you definitely don't want them <laughs> leaving something that's permanent. Yeah, exactly. And, and if they're happy, then you, yeah, you definitely have them go and leave your review. Yeah. And that's it. It's that's, a cool technique. Yeah. You know, and that's, uh, I, I saw that in like a Facebook group and 
you know, uh, there's a lot of Facebook groups that hold a lot of value. So you just kind of stand there and like different people will give, you know, different words of wisdom. And that's where I learned that one. Yeah. You know, another thing that I've learned is when I'm looking at products that I'm going to be sourcing, one of the things mm-hmm. I do is I, I always buy the top products in that category. Mm-hmm. I might look into 10 products and then only actually jump into one, right? Mm-hmm. By the time it's all said and done. But I'll end up having ordered 10 different product types and then I'll take the top, let's say three or four or five companies that are selling each one of those. So that's like 40 or 50 products that yeah. I ordered off of Amazon. Because yeah. I, I get them on Amazon so I can see what they're doing, yeah. not just the suppliers. And it's funny because <laughs> immediately you start getting all of these follow-up emails, right? And yeah. these are the top sellers. Mm-hmm. And these top sellers usually know what's going on. That's why they're top sellers. Yep. So this is a tip, guys. You can learn a lot from these follow-up sequences. And I think that's where I originally saw yeah. the two-link strategy. I'm like, why are they doing two links? And I'm like, oh, that's pretty tricky. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and then like <laughs> you said, from that, not only do you benefit from learning, I guess, what they're doing from follow-up, but you actually get to physically see their products and whatnot. Um, I think a lot of yeah. people you know, kind of complain about ordering samples from Asia and whatnot, but you know, like, have you ordered samples from your competitors? Like that's definitely something you should budget for too. Like, uh, yeah, I forgot to even, I, I don't even think about that. I just do it. I'm like, let me go check out like what the competitors are doing, uh, in my space or what the bigger names are doing. Like sometimes they have really fancy inserts and stuff like that and are like real detailed, like amazing packaging and sometimes it like scares me i'm like i don't want to deal with all this so you know, <laughs> right so. No, that, you're right yeah that's perfect yeah you're absolutely 100 right you don't actually see the inserts on amazon <laughs> so you open up the package you're like oh man that's cool how they did this particular insert yeah they must be getting a you know a 10 15 20 percent conversion rate on this insert because of the way they did it or whatever so it gives you ideas you spend money but you know what in business you got to spend money to make money mm-hmm. i think it's really important for people to get the products of their main competitors just so that you can see what you can do better anyway. So that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, that, so yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, please. I, I kind of wanted to jump back to the topic of, you know, um, I don't, I don't know if we really got to go over this, but you, you were asking me like when I was going to quit my job, uh, full time, cause I'm only doing this part time, but I, I wanted to ask you, um, when did, uh, you decide to go full time with Amazon and everything. Like, how was that process for you? Like, for me, it's kind of scary. You know, like this is my first job I ever had, and uh, it supported me all this way. But then I do now realize that Amazon, I make a lot more money on this. And um, what what was your thoughts before leaving? Yeah. So my story is going to be different than a lot of people. I already had a business. I was in the mobile apps business, and it was doing it did really well for a while. Then it started doing okay. And I wanted to get it back to doing really well. And I was putting in hours and grinding and grinding. And I saw no return. Like my hours were going up, but the revenue was staying flat. And sometimes it was even dropping. Mm -hmm. And I got discouraged. I did this for a while, a long while. And then I was just like, you know what? This is not sustainable. I can't do this. So I wanted to get into something a little bit different that I could control. And that's when I tried Amazon. And with Amazon, I realized very quickly that every hour that I put in, there would be some kind of return. I could see that graph moving upward, which was cool, right? Mm -hmm. It allowed me to scale out a little bit easier too. There's a lot more that I could scale. And I noticed that everything that I learned from the app side of stuff, I could apply like 90% of it to the Amazon side. Because with an app, you have have a thumbnail, which you kind of have a thumbnail, you know, when people are doing search on Amazon. You have your screenshot images, you have your title, you have your description, you have keywords, you have all this back end stuff and even more so because you have to localize into different languages and stuff. So it gets crazy over there. But I applied all these techniques that I learned and it did really well on Amazon. So when I started this, luckily I was making money. I was making decent money mm-hmm. off the mobile app stuff. So I was able to pull you know, money to live on off of that. Mm-hmm. So everything that was coming from Amazon, I could re-pull, I could reinvest back into the Amazon side of stuff. and. It got to a point where very quickly I was fortunate enough that, you know, the products that I picked and the strategies that I used got me to a point where it was very clear to me that this is what I want to do and I was going to make this a full time living. But I'm in a different place than you are because, you know, you're just starting out your life essentially. You're in your twenties, you know, you're Mm -hmm. not that far out of college. There's a lot of I think there's a lot of value to working in big companies and seeing how the infrastructure works and how everything the processes and socializing and all that, which A lot of people lose, right? If you're working for yourself, typically, most of the people that I've interviewed, 
they don't have humongous teams, right? They're working from their home. So you, mm -hmm. you miss a lot of that. And not everybody's money driven. You know, I just interviewed a person who has a full-time job. He's a musician and he loves that business, but, you know, does millions of dollars per year on Amazon, but he does that part-time. Kind of like what you're doing mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, you haven't decided yet what you want to do. He decided, I'm only doing this part-time. So I think it just depends on what your goals are. Are you money oriented? Or do you love your job? You know, mm -hmm. there's benefits to having a regular paycheck if you're, you haven't quite made it yet, you know, insurance, all that stuff. But dude, I mean, if you're already netting, you know, several hundred thousand dollars in net profit per year, you're doing pretty well. It's a tough decision. It may be not a tough decision, right? It's a big amount. Yeah, uh, it is a big amount. So when I did the math, um, I mean, I don't have the most lucrative job or, and, but not the worst job, but <laughs> If we yeah. did the math right now, so say I currently make what sixty six thousand, so two let's say like two fifty divided by six sixty six. Let's see. So I make about three point seven times more on Amazon, and <laughs> when I told my cousin this, uh, he's like, "Why haven't you quit yet?" And I'm like, "It like really kind of hit me." I was like, "I never really looked at it that like I make three almost four times more than like my job. So I don't know. I just like never really thought about it. And it's just like something I could sustain while working a job. And honestly, I am a yeah. little scared. Um, just, it's just a weird position. I never thought I would be in. Like I never foresaw this like two years ago, you know, like straight out of college or before I graduated college, I was like, my goal is to hit six figures uh, by the time I'm 30, you know? And I think that's a reasonable goal, you know, like, you know, straight out of yeah. college and everything. And, um, next thing you know, and you've done it. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, I did it the first year I was selling on Amazon. And then mm -hmm. this year, you know, it doubled it more than doubled. So it's just, I don't know. Uh, uh yeah. You know, for me, when I actually had a, mm -hmm. a corporate job, I had a paycheck coming and I was salaried. My thing was, I like going for that goal. I like being the top person in my company, whatever it is that I was doing, my position, mm -hmm. you know, and whether it was, you know, the accolade was, you know, shaking the hand of the VP saying, Hey man, you're our superstar or whatever. Mm -hmm. That was cool. That was almost better for me than the check. But at some point I got past that. I'm like, you know what? I would like to be able to afford to go and get this or get that, you mm -hmm. know? And no matter how many hours I was putting in, my salary wasn't changed. I was salary. I was an hourly. So yeah. my salary was the same. So with this business, you know, if I'm putting in a 16 hour days, I know I'm doing it for myself. So I really like that aspect of it. It's also one of those businesses, and you know this, where you can grab your laptop. I know a lot of guys that do this. Mm -hmm. They're digital nomads. They throw whatever it is that they need into their backpack and they travel the world. They can work their Amazon business from wherever they're at as long as they have an internet connection. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's like one of the things I, um, I, I like to work out of co-working spaces. Um, I don't know, have you ever worked out of a co-working space? I have not. It's something that I probably will be doing here shortly because, uh, yeah, I got to expand and get some people in the same room with me. Exactly. Uh, I don't know about you, but all the co-working spaces I've been to, so I travel a lot for work. Um, so in the past year, uh, you know, I, I was in San Diego for a little bit, New York and Atlanta. And um, instead of going to the client office, sometimes uh, we end up, uh, sometimes we get to go to, or sometimes we just work out of co-working spaces. And at these co-working spaces, you meet people from all sorts of different backgrounds and everyone's pretty entrepreneurial. Like, and one of the things like are, that really, really amazes me is, um, I met people who've launched physical products off of using Kickstarter. And I think it's an awesome business model because you essentially just have to invest money into prototyping your product and then getting a really good video is what they always say is key. And then you just crowdsource for item and, you know, like for me, the longest time, um, capital was an issue, but say now, if you want to launch like a really big product, you can just do it via Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. I've looked at that. That's pretty interesting. It's something I wanted to do once maybe this year, just to have the experience mm -hmm. of doing it. I have a buddy that did Kickstarter thing and he says it was a nightmare. He <laughs> so so like, he scared me uh -huh. because of all the logistics involved with, you know, when you have like 1,500 or 3,000 people, uh -huh. whatever it is that are jumping onto it. But I don't know. I want to do it. I like to say, you know, it's hard for me to teach people anything if I haven't actually done it. Yeah. You know, outside of doing things for myself, I'm also training. So I want to learn this stuff. But there's only so many hours. I want to be like you, Anthony. I want to be working like just a handful of hours a day. Yeah. In Amazon. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I yeah. think one thing 
you know, that's like really important that I started doing uh, when I first got my job is I always put at least uh, 1% away just towards an investment fund, um, just for whatever opportunities uh, come along the way. And then I started investing at least 3% for education. Um, Cause you know, like after college, generally um, everything you learn is just on your job, but um, you got to continue to be learning. Um, there's different courses, you know, on Amazon or, you know, Facebook ads or whatever it would be. But if, you know, you're always learning, then you're always going to stay ahead of the game. You know? Yeah, no, I absolutely 100% agree. And I say this so many times, you know what? There's a lot of good free content, you know, the podcast you're being interviewed on right now, it's free more than a hundred episodes that people can listen to. But at some point when you can start to afford, you know, going to events, I think that has a massive, Mm -hmm. massive value to it because you're networking, you're talking to people and you'd be surprised. I mean, I've learned so much just sitting at a bar, you know, having a Mm -hmm. a beer and some food with some of the guys that I met at the conference and you learn so much. It's like, wow, you know, everybody's like trying to say how they got to be successful and it's just, it's cool. So you network, you learn things Mm -hmm. and that costs money, right? These conferences cost money. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very, very expensive to put on, but yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. And, um, I've gone you know, like the one reason I even was so motivated to um, kind of like go more deep in Amazon was I went to my first conference and I realized like, you know, all these people are like, to me, like making it. And, you know, like, no offense. Uh, <laughs> I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. So that's just the way I saw it. And, you know, I wouldn't have had that, you know, immer- uh, initial, I guess, like just jump start in like, drive just until i went to that conference so that's yeah that's what happened with me and um that's really one of the main things that got me here today cool cool well you know what i like i like at the end you're one of the very few people i've ever interviewed that you know kind of flips it on me and says manny tell me about what you think it starts to flow more naturally like a regular conversation versus a you know an interview yeah we should have you back on the show in the future i'd like to see where you are maybe mid-year with all the new things that you're doing and we'll just kind of chat it's like if we were in person, you know, kind of like we did here at the end. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, um, I think you're going to a couple conferences this year, right? So I really want to meet you in person instead. Perfect. Yeah, I will be at a few conferences. I'm going to be mentioning which conferences I'm at. So if people want to come by and say hi, I'd love to meet everybody. But I'll be posting that in our Facebook group. And by the way, guys, I found Anthony because of a post that he made in our group. So I'd love it if you guys can participate. If you're not part of our group, it's called the FBA High Rollers. Okay, you could type that into Facebook or just go to ampmpodcast.com forward slash Facebook. But yeah, you make great connections, meet awesome people. Met Anthony, you guys got some nuggets here, hopefully. And uh, Anthony, man, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Manny. Um, I couldn't appreciate it even more. I just, there's just like something about giving back to the community where you can. Uh, sometimes you can't even, you don't even realize what nuggets that you know. And everything and people just kind of want to just know that it's to me like longest time you know like i thought it was impossible to you know generate millions so i didn't think i was going to be doing it at the age of 24 you know so i just want people to know like i'm pretty sure like all these other successful people always say it but you know like honestly you can do it too so yeah that's awesome so mind if i tag you on the post in our group People have questions? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm more than happy to do like a quick, uh, not a quick, but do and ask me anything. So, Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Anthony. Thank you so much. And we'll be talking in the future. Hey, guys, if you like this episode, definitely check out episode number 103. It's the episode where Kevin King and myself get together and we start dropping some nuggets, those golden nuggets that we all want. It's episode 103. Check it out. Hey guys, listen up. If you're loving the content from the podcast, but you want to take it to the next level and learn advanced strategies, the strategies that I'm using to take myself from $1.6 million in sales last year to what I'm hoping will be $4 million in sales this year, then listen up. Okay. I just need a few minutes of your time because this is going to be awesome. I've created a high end paid training group called the Illuminati Mastermind. Now, Before you go, what? What is the Illuminati? I'm just going to tell you. The modern definition of Illuminati is a person who is enlightened beyond others about a specific topic. In our case, that topic is private label. Our Illuminati members will be enlightened in the art of outsmarting, outranking, and outselling their competition. So let me tell you just some of what has been covered so far in our monthly training. 
Okay, we talked about a secret strategy we use to ensure that our supplier is giving us the best possible price. And this has saved us tens of thousands of dollars already this year. It's probably gonna be over $100,000 for me personally by the end of the year, right? Because if you're spending $6 a unit on a product instead of $3 and you think you got the best price, you're getting hosed, right? So we're gonna show you how to fix that. We also talked about a quick service that I linked to my Amazon account that should generate me more than $20,000 in sales this year alone from eBay. And I wasn't gonna be selling on eBay, but guys, this took just 15 minutes to set up and I never need to do anything again. And I'll be honest, I didn't even set it up. I just kind of pushed it off to somebody else and they did it. How to add high converting coupon buttons to your pages that almost nobody is doing. This one really blew away a lot of people. And that's just in our free webinar, okay? The free webinar that I want you to check out right now. That's gonna be at IlluminatiMastermind.com. So write that down, IlluminatiMastermind.com. If you join us on the paid membership, we open the floodgates for you, okay? Our paid Illuminati monthly training members just learned how I save myself over $1,000 per month, sometimes $1,500 per month on freight forwarding with just a one minute tweak. It's super simple and this is easily gonna add up to at least 12 grand this year, maybe more, and that's money in my pocket. We also talked about who I go to on Amazon for better seller support right, than the general seller support staff because I seem to never get anywhere with those guys and I know a lot of people complain about them. So I'm gonna tell you what I do to get by them. And we're gonna talk about a service that Kevin King uses to get his products included in tons of catalogs and gift guides. And these things generate sales for him daily. And it really, really crushed it in all the Christmas guides that he got his products into during the holidays. We talked about how to force Amazon into giving you the perfect keyword filled URL. Okay, so that you rank better with SEO. If you don't do the exact process, you're just gonna be given a random URL with a bunch of keywords from your title and it's just a mess, it doesn't do anything for you. We also talked about how traditional product inserts, you know, standard paper inserts you put into your product boxes that you hope someone will type in the website and go register the warranty or whatever it might be, how those are pretty much obsolete unless you are part of our group. And if you're part of our group, then you're gonna know we have something we call the Illuminati inserts and they're gonna blow your mind. It's crazy. Crazy, right you got to get with the 21st century all of this and a ton more and we do it every single month during our high-end webinar training and we also do a monthly Q&A session with me Kevin and our other super successful mentors just to make sure that you're covered on all the topics that we presented and if you're ready to take it to the next level beyond the monthly training and assuming that there are any tickets left please come and join us at our live Illuminati mastermind training with 74 other Amazon sellers that's right we've got a cap there's 75 people that are coming out to this event and it's gonna be amazing it's three nights and it's uh, I think it's gonna be mind-blowing uh, the guests that we're bringing out to speak the mentors are top level a lot of these guys have never spoken at other events we got them to agree to come out to our event and uh, we're super super excited by the way none of this is cheap okay I always say this up front because uh, we don't want tire kickers we want people that want to take action right would you rather be cheap or would you rather have the potential to rub elbows with guys that really know what's going on guys and gals um, to potentially 2x 3x and even 10 10x your earnings. So come join us. I'll show you a tool if you don't already know about it that's uh, in our free webinar, by the way, that should hopefully pay for your monthly training for some time to come if you actually use it. Okay, it'll get you some money back. So head over to IlluminatiMastermind.com and sign up for the next webinar right now. Okay, the first two live webinars we did, by the way, they maxed out at the 1000 seat capacity. So get there early, don't miss it, add it to your calendar, set a reminder with Siri or Cortana or whoever it is that you're using uh, for that specific time on that date. And yeah, head over to IlluminatiMastermind.com and I'll see you on the inside. You've been listening to the AM PM podcast hosted by Manny Coates. For more information, insider, insider tools, tools, and to get the resources mentioned in this episode, visit ampmpodcast.com.